All right, so I think it's been a reoccurring thing that a couple times me and Billy have a somewhat clash with uh, the chorus stuff. <laughs> I'm going to say it's some of this. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm going to say something. It's probably going to make Billy very happy and it'll explain <laughs> why I'm even here here on this particular channel. So the story of how Readout Productions got red-pilled. Oh, so there was a, a woke here, very good? Hmm. Well, I, I don't think how much do people cared if I spoil stuff. No it's one not... gives a shit about oh. Legend of Horror. Go ahead. Have at it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's brutal. Okay, so the show was show ran from 2012 2014. I think it's inconsistently paced, but I do personally believe the first and third seasons are pretty decent, enjoyable villains. The second season is absolute bleh. It, and everybody universally is uh -huh. like it. But we get to season four. In season four, the whole season, I'm just like, mm, this is a little mediocre. I'm like, this isn't really a great way to end the show. It's just kind of, eh, we're just kind of going through the motions. Yeah. Doesn't help that season two ended with the end of the world fret. It's like you did it too early. So the fourth <laughs> one, nothing, nothing tops it. Uh, oh, keep in mind too, we're talking about teenage me. So this is me oblivious to the real world, just going for the motions. And they end the show by getting two ga characters together. And I just sat there and I'm going, those two really didn't have a lot of chemistry. I don't know. You're talking about the two clams, okay? <laughs> Dude, okay, for anyone who we wants to know, that. for all four seasons, she literally fucks everyone in the cast. This Every is true. Character. <laughs> wow. That is why That's... she is called the Legend of Hora. <laughs> it is no joke. It is no wow. joke. So, okay. yeah, yeah, bad relationship in the whole show. That's, and bad most. Teacher. Yeah, most people watch the show and like it. Even they go, man, the romance is terrible in this. <laughs> but they ended with hooking up Korra with Asami, who's supposed to be her new best friend, kind of comes out of nowhere. They didn't really lo like each other yeah, in the first season. they were like season. rivals at the beginning. Yeah, and then I'm okay <laughs> if you're going to develop them, but develop them. There's next to no interaction with them in books two or three, and we get like two scenes and flashbacks in book four of them communicating messages, and then we get Korra blushing because Asami says, you have nice hair, and then at the end, they're like, oh yeah, they're they're together now, and I'm like, that came out of nowhere. Well, that's so lazy, and I, my rant was, you're doing this only so you can say, look, it's just like the end of Avatar, where the two main leads got together, and it's like, yes, but you built that relationship. And even that was a little bit yeah. shaky, but but decent. We knew it was the end. I'm like, this is lazy. And I remember telling everybody, it's my friends and stuff, going, man, I really hate how they ended that. That was just really lazy. It was just a whimper ending. And everybody's like, how dare you say that? And I'm like, what? Don't you understand? You you have, but if you don't like it, then then you're a homophobe. And I'm like, what? It's bad writing. And at that moment, I was red pilled. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Christian. It would take a few more years, but I think that that, that was the moment. Hey, <laughs> Christian, uh, he's in the chat. What about me saying the legend of horror is wrong? <laughs> now that you provide the context, I cannot dispute you, Billy. <laughs> is that like, like you can enjoy the show? That's fine. But yo, no, yeah. Billy is right. The romance is badly written, and yeah, she just jumps around all the characters, and uh, yeah, it's just that's pretty terrible. I think ultimately why <laughs> it's the core is, is wonkily written, and I think I mentioned this brief uh, on Darkish uh, Darkish stream last Thursday. I mentioned it. The problem was one of the writers from Avatar: The Last Airbender that was central in all the writing. He is not part of the Legend of Korra production team at all. So there wasn't that balance, I feel. And that's... Uh -huh. I think, weren't they also arguing with the studio or something? Like the studio oh, wanted certain things in it, which I, I think oh, that's... That, that series had an uphill battle from the start. It, it's like Nickelodeon wanted them to make a sequel to Avatar, but everything that they came up with, they didn't like. And they were going to fight it tooth and nail. Yeah, and that's why I've, I feel like all of that, all that sort of relationship stuff was just kind of shoehorned in. 
and why it really didn't make sense at the end was just that oh the studio wants this we got to shoehorn it in and and gosh darn it we're gonna put it in there whether it works or not mm -hmm. yeah sounds uh sounds like they they fumbled on the love plot like they did in game of thrones i believe it was season five or season seven when they decided to get uh the two titular leads together and then oh, it well, i mean there is like made no sense in the book for that. i mean there's foreshadowing but like the actual them getting together on the last episode he opens the door and he looks at her and she looks at him and they just bang you know like yeah but Oh, oh, you kind of hate each other. The reason <laughs> like he doesn't want to marry her, each other. A, the reason he doesn't want to marry her is because she's his aunt. Fun fact in yeah. Westeros, in the books, aunts and uh, uh, nephews and uncles and nieces can get married, so there would have been no yeah. fucking taboo for that shit. Yeah, it's, it's writing, you know. That's how it comes down to is the writing, and uh, they they fumbled on the main relationship in that one, which you let be honest, we all seen coming from miles away as soon as they freaking met, um, and they couldn't even get that right. Oh, Maji, what uh, Clone War show was it? You said that you yeah, watched? which one was the it? Main was movie? It, are you talking about the animated one? No, no, the movie or three D. The 2D, the oh, animated there. one. There's no, the, the movie, movie animated one. The, the you know? Attack of the Clones Wars. Oh, oh that... you were saying the Clone Wars, you dumb. It's a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> I always fell asleep. I got <laughs> boring. So I have yet to finish. What you doing. didn't like? I hate sand. It gets everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the only memorable part. <laughs> I, those those three movies. I, I just like. If they should have just done the Star Wars Clone Wars and done that instead, that would have been so much better. Uh, I don't know if that would work as live action, the Clone Wars show. Yeah, true with that. But I mean, like a lot of the stuff that was in that, they ended up bringing into the movies. And because, like, uh, what's his name? The guy with the four arms and all the lightsabers and stuff swirling. Grievous? Oh, yes. What are you talking? Okay, hold up, Raven. The animated Clone Wars show was made after the prequels were wrapped up. The uh, the uh, cartoon one, that one was going off. Of, so the reason why General Grievous and Revenge of the Sith is way different from that uh, cartoon one was because they were going off of what George told him General Grievous was. <laughs> so that's why he's like all badass fucking murdering Jedi left and right and shit and using all kinds of gadgets. And in the fucking uh, movie, he's just got like, you know, He's got, like, he's got like lung. a smoker's cough <laughs> robot. He's dying. got the black lung. So, oh. the, the original Star Wars Clone Wars stuff that like introduced uh, Aventus and um, General Grievous was actually done by, and I, I know there's the the one that everybody remembers and stuff, which came after like a, a really long form, like movie type thing, um, but there was this stuff on. Um, uh, what was it? Um, Are you thinking of Samurai Jack? That's the animation. Yes, the Samurai the Jack. Art style. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that those two characters were introduced in that. And I think that was out before the second, that. third movie. No, it was before the third. Okay, so Raven, like I just said, Grievous was, they were going off of what George was telling them Grievous was supposed to be when they were, yeah. <laughs> when they're doing it. So, they came up with what he was telling them Grievous was, and then Revenge of the Sith came out, and they're like, oh, what the fuck? That's General Grievous? <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> yeah, Attack, <laughs> Attack of the Clones came out in 2002. The original Clone Wars animated series was 2003. Then Revenge of the Sith is 2005. What's wrong with their uh, technology, by the way, in Star Wars? Why mean? why do all their cyborgs have freaking respiratory issues? Because it was literally just like a heart and a brain. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> but I mean Darth Vader, cyborg. Oh. Okay, hold on. Grievous, up. cyborg. <laughs> <laughs> so do not go cyborg in that universe. It's no there, good. There is an actual dumb lore reason why Vader uh, you know, fucking getting there go. <sighs> 
It's basically because the emperor's a dick. Yeah, the emperor like made his suit to be painful. It's so stupid. Yeah, he said it's like, oh, well, we can't heal him completely. No, no, I want him to be forever in pain. So I I thought a part of that was actually because of the rebreather. Because whenever he takes the helmet off in the one movie, it's no longer the that weird breathing sound anymore. No, No, Raven, what we're talking about in the EU. They actually made a dumb canon reason for why he breathes like that all the time. That's what we're t- talking about. Do you remember if that was like the Dark Knight comics or something else? Because I, I read a lot of the books and I don't remember. You mean the Dark Horse comics? Yeah, that's what I mean. The Dark Horse. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know if it came from a book or a comic book. But I know that <laughs> that is like one of the dumb oh, little reasons. Yeah. That's actually what I wanted to say because we were speaking of books earlier and my mind just slipped. Um, And Star Wars is exactly it. Apparently, I think it's Barnes & Noble where they actually have to carry those brand new High Republic books and they have to put them like on the front shelf. So what they have decided to do is on their the front shelves they are putting the old school Star Wars books and the High Republic books they're putting on the floor in front of them. <laughs> they're like, here, we're, we're going to try to trick you to buy the High Republic. Come on, yeah, guys. Don't you like the... that rock character? You know, the one who's <laughs> black space rock? Oh, yeah. Geo. you got to buy the crap books to get to yeah. the good one. <laughs> you know, I've only ever read one Star Wars novel. And I'm actually surprised I read that because I'm not big into Star Wars. Mm-hmm. But it was Vector Prime by Ari Salvador. Was it good? Yeah, it was. Uh, the The reason I read that one is I let a, or I read a lot of his uh, Driss Dorden books, so yeah. I was like, okay. "Oh, he's doing sci fi here instead of fantasy. I'll yeah. give it a shot." I want to read the uh, the Revenge of the Sith uh, book adaptation. The book? Yeah, the because that one goes off the original movie script, which is All why right. we know that like technically Palpatine's Anakin's father. Hmm. He used All to right, force yeah, the kid Padme, or not Padme, whatever his mother's name was, pregnant. Yeah, <laughs> Smee. Yeah, yeah, Smee. Do you remember Smee? Oh, brother, Shmi Skywalker, Smee. <laughs> Look, oh. I'm glad that the sequels made people reappreciate the prequels, but at the same time. You gotta understand the prequels are not perfect either. <laughs> Hold up, read now. Yeah, I, 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 I love the prequels. I do. But I don't act like they're the greatest fucking movies and they don't have problems. Like, I, I'm 100% addressing and make fun of it. I, I, I did not fun. like the prequels until the sequels came out. And I was like, well, okay, considering how much crap everything's gotten, prequels are actually pretty decent. 